The clothing or the uniforms we wear help identify us to others. The roles we play, the jobs we do, the status we have in an organization or group. In the Orthodox Church, the same applies. Our clergy, deacons, priests, and bishops wear distinct items that identify them to one another and to the faithful. Some of the items are the same, but each rank of the clergy wear different items that are distinct to their rank. We're going to show you these vestments, as we call them, and how each order of the priesthood wears them, what they signify, and the prayers they recite as they place each one of them on before they celebrate the services of the church. Usually, the clergy put on their vestments behind the altar, unseen, but so we can show you what they wear and talk about each garment, they are vesting on the soleus. We're going to begin with the vestments of a deacon. Welcome, Deacon Athanasios. These are the vestments he wears at the Divine Liturgy and many other church services. The stichadion, the epimanikia or cuffs, and the orarion. These vestments developed over many centuries, but basically they were the regular garments worn by men in the Roman and Byzantine empires. They would be simpler in decoration for day-to-day -day life, but those who worked near the emperor needed to be more richly decorated. The church adopted these for the clergy. By the sixth century, the basic pattern of what vestments looked like was set and hasn't changed all that much since. The first garment he puts on is the stichadion, or tunic. A tunic was the most common garment worn by people in the Roman Empire. Deacons, priests, and bishops all wear a stichadion. But in the case of the deacon, because it is so visible, it is the most richly decorated. Because of the decoration, some people think that it is the model for the sakos that the bishop wears. Next, the deacon will put on his cuffs, in Greek called epimanikia, meaning over the hands. These are very practical because they keep the sleeves under the stichadion in place. Cuffs were commonly worn in the Roman Empire too. He'll place the right cuff on with one prayer and the left with another. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Grant me understanding that I may learn from your commandments. Always, now, and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The last garment the deacon will put on is the orarion. This is unique to deacons. It is basically a very long scarf that he places over his left shoulder and around his body. Wearing this, everyone knows he's a deacon. When he says parts of the liturgy, he will hold one end of the orarion in his right hand and hold that hand up for all to see. In the Roman Empire, when someone had something important to say and needed to be noticed, he would hold his hand up. We see that in statues of important Romans. For practical reasons, the deacon will wrap the orarion around himself to keep it in place when he receives and distributes Holy Communion. Now the deacon is ready to serve the liturgy. Let's see the vestments of a priest. Welcome Father Nicholas. Father Nicholas is already wearing the vestments that he shares with the deacon. He said the same prayers too. The priest's tichadion isn't as fancy because it is worn under everything else and not very visible. Some say the stichadion reminds us of the white tunic that a newly baptized person would wear. This is the epitirhilion, or stole. In some ways, it is an orarion that is worn around the neck and buttoned in front, but shorter. But what's important is that it is the mark of a priest in the church. He wears the epitirhilion at all services that he conducts. It is the piece that says he's a priest. Next, he'll place the zoni, which means belt. It has a very practical function, holding everything in place. Some priests wear the epigonation. The word means on the knee, 
because of where it rests when he places it on. It is an award that a priest can receive, showing an additional rank or responsibility, like that of confessor. The Philonion. This garment, the Philonion, is interesting because St. Paul tells Timothy to collect his Philonion. In that passage, it means coat or cloak, so we think St. Paul forgot it at someone's house or that he lent it to someone. But this reminds us that the cloak is the origin of this vestment of a priest. In the icons, many of the clergy are wearing what looks like a Philonion, but seems much longer in front. The Philonion used to be much longer, hanging down to the knees. Remember, it was worn as a cloak, like a poncho, with designs that said, this is a priest. But over time, to make the garment more useful, the Orthodox shortened the front. Roman Catholic clergy wear something very similar, still long in front. When the priest puts the garment on, he says a prayer. Always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Some priests also wear a jeweled cross, but we'll look at that with the bishop's vestments. Now the priest is ready to serve the liturgy. Finally, we are going to see the vestments of a bishop. Welcome your grace, Bishop Demetrius of Xanthos. His grace is wearing the vestments that he shares with the deacon and the priest. Like them, he puts these on first and says the same prayers that they say. He'll place his epigonation on a bit later, but it is the same piece as a priest. This is called a sakos. It is a very large vestment, frequently made of heavy and very ornate fabric, requiring help to put it on and fasten it. Some think that only the highest-ranking bishops, patriarchs mainly, would wear this garment. But originally, a bishop would wear merely a philonion with many crosses on it. The sakos resembles a deacon stichadion, but it also resembles a garment that the emperor would wear. In the case of a bishop, it clearly is one of the main signs of his office, connecting him to his authority within the church. Over time, it seems that all bishops began to wear the sakos. At this point, the bishop places his epigonation. On your thigh, O mighty one, and your splendor and beauty string your bow. Prosper and reign because of truth, meekness, and righteous. Your right hand shall lead you wondrously, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Like the deacon and priest, the bishop wears a large scarf that shows his office. It is called an omophorion. It is much larger than the deacon's and worn over the shoulders very differently. We can see this in the icons. In the seventh century, St. Isidore said that this is a symbol of a sheep that the bishop carries over his shoulders, reminding him and everyone that his task is that of shepherd. For that reason, the omophorion is usually white and decorated with crosses. The large omophorion is rather cumbersome. He needs help even putting it on. But because it can make certain actions of the liturgy more difficult for him, it developed to be more practical. Then, over time, a smaller version developed. It's called the small omophorion. During the divine liturgy, just before the gospel reading, the bishop removes the great omophorion out of respect for the gospel and in recognition that Christ is present in the reading. After the gospel, he will place the small omophorion around his shoulders for the remainder of the liturgy. A bishop will wear a pectoral cross and an engolpion. The cross will have an icon of the crucifixion of Christ. Some priests may wear this cross too. The engolpion is round with an icon on it. The icon is often the Virgin Mary, but it could be a saint or a feast day. The prayers, which are verses from Scripture, remind all of us of our responsibilities as Christians. I himself take up his cross and follow me.
Let us pray to the Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O God, a renewing the right spirit within me, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Bishops wear a crown called a mitre. It is one of the last vestments that bishops began to wear. To the Lord. Lord have For mercy. centuries, bishops did not wear this, with just one yes, or two exceptions. You, you but in the late 15th century, all bishops began to wear the mitre. It is a sign of the bishop's authority in the church. He also carries a staff. It serves as a reminder of the bishop's role as a shepherd. In the Western Church, bishops seem to have used a staff very early. But in the Orthodox Church, bishops began to carry this staff around the same time as they began to wear the mitre. It's unique in that there is a two-headed snake or dragon under the sign of the cross. It can seem to mean a few things, the church and state and their relationship under God. It also looks like the sign of a medical doctor, reminding us of healing. We often see bishops with these items as well. The first is the mandia, it is a long, vividly colored cloak the bishop wears when serving from the bishop's throne. This is a cloak. Monks wear very simple versions of this, usually black. But the bishop's is much fancier and colorful, a sign of his office in the church. These are candlesticks. The three candles remind us of the Holy Trinity. The two remind us of the divine and human natures of Christ. The bishops use these to bless people. They remind us that all Christians are to be the light of the world. People of high rank in the imperial court of the Byzantines would have candles carried near them. Once all the clergy have put on their vestments, they are ready to celebrate the divine liturgy. They will take their positions according to their rank. Because of their garments, everyone will know who they are and the role they play in the Divine Liturgy. Thank you, Your Grace, Bishop Demetrius, Father Nicholas, and Deacon Athanasios for sharing this beautiful part of our Orthodox Christian tradition. <laughs>